Suddenly, I awaken with a start. The night is pitch black, and no one else is in the house. It's scary being alone in the dark. So to find everyone, I head out to the, into the I head out into the garden. I head out into the garden. I can't read. Our mansion's gardens are vast fields of green, surrounded by a thick, dense forest, with the trees blanketing out the light, almost like a massive curtain. Like a stage in a theater somewhere, the curtain of trees opens with a swishing sound. Excitement fills me, anticipating the beginning of the grand play. In the distance, I hear the sound of echoes beyond the black curtain of trees. Inside the forest, the sounds of everyone happily playing around. The curtain doesn't open yet. Unable to restrain myself, I wander into the darkness of the forest. Darkness surrounds me, a blackness so deep it's suffocating. Not even the calmest rays of the moonlight can reach this. The air is cold, the winter's chill is so deep, my eyes feel like they'll freeze. For a brief moment, I thought I heard someone call my name, so I walk even deeper into the forest. After passing through the veil of trees, I find everyone waiting for me in the forest clearing. But something is wrong. Everyone is lying on the ground. Everyone is lying on the ground in pieces. The clearing is bathed in red. I don't understand. A stranger approaches. The look on his face says he wants to rip me apart. I don't understand at all. But someone else, someone I don't know, steps in front of me and is torn apart in my place. I'm just a kid, so I don't really understand. A splash. Something warm and wet hits my face. It's red. A red liquid, red like a tomato. The person that was torn apart, that person I called mom. Dang! Never called my name. Dang, she died! I really don't understand. Hold on. The, the text is moving to me. But is it just so cool? I wanted to cry. I just felt like crying. What the freak is going on? Pause up. Warm crimson blurs my vision, seeping into my eyes. But it doesn't bother me at all. The lonely moon floats above me, bearing witness in the night sky. It's strange. Why didn't I realize until now? Such a cold, horrible nightmare. Yes, I didn't realize it. That tonight, the moon was so beautiful. What the fuck is going? What just happened? What just happened? What, what the fuck? All right, what's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milligan, and Villa Villa Trilligan, and we are playing Suki Hime, Blue Glass Moon Under the Crimson Air. Um, I wanted to, you know, y'all know, I, I, I've been wanting to get into more visual novels. I've been playing a lot of RPGs and stuff. I already know I've started playing Umineko. And while I'm playing Umineko, I thought I'd get into Tsukuhime as well. Since these are two that, these were the two that interest me the, interested me the most, all right? And when I finish V3, I think I want to start on Fate. And I know that this game has some... Uh, uh, you, you feel me? Don't worry. Uh, I'll, I'll be censoring it, all right? But I'm not gonna skip it. Y'all gotta see my reactions, you know? But I will be censoring it, don't worry. I don't know who I'm playing as, so I'm gonna just give them my voice for now. And you know, once I, once I get a, once I, when I, once I have an idea of what they look like and what they probably sound like, you know, that's then I'm gonna give them a voice I think fits them. When I came to, I was lying on the hospital bed. The curtain on a nearby window sways gently. It's a beautiful day outside, and the dry wind signals the end of summer. Hello, Tano Shiki-kun. Congratulations on your recovery. And I'm for, oh, that's an old nigga. Oh my goodness, man. I'm over here thinking like, I'm over here thinking it's gonna be a nice lady. This noise is about to piss me off. An unfamiliar girl, hold on. Hello, Tano Shiki-kun. Congratulations on your recovery. The unfamiliar old man extends his hand for a handshake. His square rimmed glasses and warm smile are very befitting. I'm turning my volume on. It's about to make me mad. His tidy looking white clothes suit him perfectly too. Can you understand what I am saying, Shiki? No. Why am I in a hospital? You don't remember, do you? You were involved in a car accident while you were walking. Your chest was stabbed by a shard of glass 
and it was unlikely that you would survive. Very, be very befitting of what a doctor would say, yet he says it while still smiling cheerfully. Terrible. I feel terrible. I'm tired, man. Can I go to sleep? Yes, you should rest. You must focus on recuperating and not push yourself. The doctor's still smiling. To be honest, I can't stand that smile anymore. What the fuck is smile off your face? Can I ask you something, doctor? What is it, Shiki? Why are there scribbles all over your body? And there are cracks all over the walls. Why are there cracks? He can see that? I thought I was tripping. <laughs> oh, 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 I thought I was tripping. Why are there cracks in the walls? The smile vanishes just for a brief moment and returns to his face immediately. He turns and walks away. It seems there was some brain damage after all. Get a hold of Dr. Ashia in neurology. I also suspect he may have suffered from damage to his eyes. Spend the rest of the afternoon examining his eyes. The doctor whispers to the nurses so that I won't hear him. <laughs> I got good ass ears. I heard that shit. Weird. There are scribbles all over everyone's bodies. The sloppy, zigzagging black lines running all over the floors, walls, and ceiling. I don't understand what they mean, but looking at them makes me feel sick. I wonder what it is. The bed, too, is covered in these scribbly lines. When I touch the line with my finger, my fingertips sink, sink down into the crack. Oh, shit. Feels as though I could reach further down with something narrower, so I traced the line with the fruit knife that was laying on the bedside table. I didn't use any strength at all, yet the knife sinks into the bed all the way up to the hilt. It was fun, so I dragged the knife along the scribbly line. Thud! With a heavy sound, the bed snaps cleanly in two. It's still doing that shit. The girl in the bed next to mine screams. The nurse runs over and takes the knife away from me. How did you break the bed, Shiki? Oh, damn. Hold on. The doctors don't ask why, but curiously persists on how I did it. Shit, I traced along that line and it broke. The fuck you want me to say? Hey, why is this hospital covered in cracks, bro? You better stop with that, Shiki. There are no such cracks like that anywhere. Now tell me, just how did you break the bed? Fucking your mama, nigga. <laughs> you can tell me. I promise I won't get mad. Bro, I'm telling you. All I did was just trace the line with the knife. I don't know what else to say. I see. But well, we'll continue this conversation tomorrow, young man. And you better not lie to me. Or I will tell your mother. Oh, shit. Never mind. I forgot she's dead. That was his mom that died, right? In the in the op opening part? That was, his, that was his mom? No? I don't know. I'll find out. The doctor leaves. In the end, not a single person believed my story. Oh, thank God. As long as I run the knife along the scribbles, I can cleanly cut anything. I don't have to put any force into it. It is as easy as cutting paper with scissors. The bed, the chair, the desk, the walls, the floor. I've never tried, but probably, no, definitely even people. But it seems that no one else can see these lines. The black lines only I can see. Despite being a kid, I gradually began to understand what the lines were. They were probably like stitches. Just like the stitches that hold an open wound together after surgery. I think they are weak spots. He thinks he, uh, he thinks he's Nanami Kinto. After all, there's no way I could cut such a thing with a child's strength alone. Oh, dang, we're a kid. Hold on. Yeah, I didn't know until now. That the world is covered in these lines, these breaking lines that bind everything together. No one else can see them. That's why they are just fine. But I can see them. I'm scared, so scared, I can't even... I'm sorry. It's as if I'm the only one who went crazy. Maybe that's why? Why even after two weeks, no one believes my story? Even after two weeks, no one has come to see me. No family haven't asked. Even after two... Oh, shit! I think I see what's going on. Okay, okay. In the beginning part, we weren't playing as this guy. We were playing as someone else. And he was like... He he, he was like cutting niggas up and shit. Using the stitches. Like, he, he was just cutting niggas up. So his mom ain't dead yet. His mom ain't dead yet, I guess. I don't know. Perhaps. Even after two weeks, I continue to live alone in a world surrounded by black stitches. I'm not doing that ugly-ass kid voice. I need to get out. 
I don't want to be in his room anymore. I don't want to stay in a place covered in stitches. That's why I decided to escape and run away to someone, somewhere no one else would be. But the wound on my chest still hurts and I didn't get very far. And that's when I noticed I'm standing in the grassy field just outside of town. But they didn't get far at all. <coughs> my chest hurts and I feel so sad. I collapse on my knees and cough. <coughs> There's nobody here. Drowning in this ocean of green at the end of summer, I feel like I'm about to disappear. But before that, hey you. It's dangerous to sit in a place like that. Oh, that is a woman. I hear a woman's voice from behind me. Eh? Eh? What do you mean, eh? You're already a runt, so if I can't see you if you're so I can't see you if you're sitting in the grass. I was this close to kicking you, so watch out. She points at me rather grumpily. I get a little angry. After all, I sit in the fourth row from the front, so I don't think I'm that short. Oh, shit. No, my fault. I get a little angry. After all, I sit in the fourth row from the front, so I don't think I'm that short. Kicked by who? Isn't it obvious, stupid? You and I are the only ones here, so who else could it be but me? She declares as confidently as she folds her arms. Well, I suppose it must be fate we met here, so you want to talk for a little while? Where's sweetheart? My name is Alzaki Alko. What's yours? She extends her hand to me with the kind of cheerfulness one would show an old friend. I see no reason to refuse, so I tell her my name is Tono Shiki and grasp her cool hand in return. Oh, she look cool as fuck! Hold on! Hold on, she got that style to her. She got style to her. She looked cool as fuck. Talking to her was a lot of fun. She didn't ignore what I said just because I was a kid. Instead, she listened. She listened to what I had to say like a friend. We talked about many, many things. About my family. About how it was an old, respected family with very strict, traditional rules and an equally strict father. And my little sister, Akiha. Quiet Akiha always followed me around about our big mansion and the vast gardens, about how Akiha and I would play together with our friends. I told her about many things almost feverishly. Oh, it's this time already. Sorry, Shiki. I've got some business to take care of, so let's stop here. She gets up to leave. My chest tightens and I feel sad, thinking I would be alone, be alone again. See you tomorrow. I'll be waiting for you here, okay? You should go back to your room and listen to your doctor. Oh, she speaks with such ease in such a natural way as she makes her way off. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be able to talk like we did today. I'm happy. It was the first time I truly felt something since I awoke from the accident. Since that day, going to that grassy field in the afternoons became part of my daily routine. She would get angry when I called her Alka. For some reason, it seems she hated her own name. For some thought, I decided that she seemed to be a very distinguished person, so I came to call her Sensei. Sensei would seriously listen to anything I had to say, and would always dispel my anxieties with but a single word without fail. I was depressed from the accident, but slowly thanks to Sensei, I began to return to my former self. Even though scary black scribbles didn't seem quite so scary anymore when talking to Sensei, I didn't know who she was or where she was from. Perhaps she really was a teacher, but I don't care. It doesn't matter at all because it was fun being with Sensei. That alone is all that matters. That alone is more than enough. Hey Sensei, look what I can do. I wanted to surprise her one day, so using the fruit knife I brought from the hospital, I cut a tree growing in the field. Oh my goodness, you stupid bitch. That is not what you do. <laughs> That is, hey, that is not a smart decision. That was not a smart decision. Like before, I run the knife along the scribble-like line and cut cleanly across the base. Amazing, isn't it? I can cut anything easily as long as it's somewhere where I can see the scribbles. No one else can do this, right? Shiki. She slaps me across the face. As she fucking should, you dumbass. 
Sensei? What you just did is extremely thoughtless. Sensei gives me a hard, piercing glare. I don't know why, but I realized I just did something I definitely shouldn't have. With Sensei's severe expression and the pain from my cheek when she slapped me, I felt very, very sad. I'm sorry. Before I knew it, I was crying. Shiki. Then a gentle, warm feeling envelops me. There's no need to apologize. It's true you did something I should be angry at you for, but it's definitely not your fault. Sensei squats down and hugs me. But you know, if someone doesn't tell you otherwise now, one day you're gonna make a mistake you can never take back. That's why, I won't, that's why I won't apologize. You can hate me all you want if you feel that way. No, I don't hate you, Sensei. Really? I'm glad you feel that way. But I guess it was fate that the two of us met here like this. Sensei began to ask about the scribbles I could see. As I told her about the lines, the black jagged lines that somehow only I could see, Sensei's embrace tightened. Shiki, what you are seeing is something that should never be seen by anyone or anything. Everything in existence has points where they are the most easily broken. We, who will break down one day, are imperfect for this reason. Your eyes have the ability to see the fate of all things. To put it another way, you can see the future. See? The future? That's right. You can see death. You don't need to know any more than that. If someday you happen to go down that path, the principles will become clear to you as something that is needed. Sensei, I really don't understand. That's good. It's important you don't understand now. All I want you to know is that you must never cut these lines on a whim or as a joke, understand? If you do so, your eyes will begin to take the lives of others too lightly, and that is the worst thing that could possibly happen. Okay, I won't do it if you say so. Besides, it kind of hurts my chest. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. Good for you, Shiki. Never forget the feelings that you have experienced here today. If you stay that way, I'm sure you'll find happiness. Sensei finally lets go of me. But Sensei, I see those lines and get worried. They'll be cut as soon as I trace them, right? Then it wouldn't be weird for my surroundings to come apart at any time. You're right. I'll be able to help you with that at least. It seems as if that's the reason I'm here. Sensei sighs and favors me with a warm smile. Shiki, I'll give you a very special present tomorrow. I'll give you your old life back, the one you were living before the accident. Bro, she's gonna pull up. She's gonna she's gonna hit us with a coup de gras. She's gonna pull a butt pull a butt up between our eyes. The next day, exactly the seventh day after I met Sensei. She arrives in the grassy field carrying a large trunk in one hand. Here, you can put these on. Those strange scribbles won't be visible anymore. What she gave me was a pair of glasses. But my eyes are fine. Just put them on, dumbass. The lenses don't have any magnification or anything. Sensei forces them on me. Suddenly, whoa, incredible. Hold on, hold on, Sensei, that's kind of hard. I can't see the scribbles anymore, not at all. Of course. I had quite a time stealing Mystic Eye Killer from my older sister to make this Aozaki Alco masterpiece. So treat them well or they'll be hell to pay, got it? Yep. I'll take good care of them. You're incredible, Sensei. You made all those horrible lies disappear just like that. It's like magic. Of course, I'm a sorceress after all. Give me a proud, give me a, giving me a proud smile, Sensei puts her trunk down on the ground. But know this, Shiki. Those lines haven't disappeared. It's just that you can't see them. Once you take the glasses off, you'll be able to see them again. Really? Yes. That's the one thing that cannot be fixed. Your only choice is to keep living your life and do your best with the eyes you have now. No. I don't want these scary eyes. If I cut those lines again, I'll end up breaking my promise to you. Oh, you mean never cutting the lines again? <laughs> Silly. You can break that promise whenever you like. Really? But you said it was something I shouldn't do. Yes, it is. But that is your gift, Shiki. It's yours to use as you see fit. No one else but you has the right to judge you. 
But out of all the abilities one can have, yours is terribly unique. If you have such a power, there's then that means there is meaning behind you having it. So if you want to cut a bunch of niggas up and commit mass genocide, like, hey, my nigga, that's on you. Do what the fuck you want to do. You feel me? God doesn't give us powers for no reason. You might say that you were given the mystic eyes of death perception because one day a time will come when you will need them. That's why you must not live in denial of their existence. Sensei squats down so our eyes would be level. But you know, that's why you must never forget. You are a very kind and honest person, Shiki. As long as you remain the way you are now, your eyes will never bring forth any wrong. However, I'm not telling you to become a saint. All I'm saying is live true to yourself and become a man in the manner that you think is right. Since you can accept your mistakes and are able to apologize, I know that in 10 years you will become a great man. That being said, Sensei stands and, re and reaches for a trunk. Oh, but I must say, unless in exceptional circumstances, you shouldn't take the glasses off. Special powers attract other special powers. Only when you decide there is no, no other way should you take off those glasses, and even then, be mindful of how you use your power. Power in itself is not evil. What is evil rests solely in the hearts of the ones wielding such power. Be it for good or evil, it will be up to you and the choices you make. She picks up her trunk. Since he doesn't say anything more after that, but deep down, I knew you would have to part. It's impossible, Sensei. I can't do it. I wouldn't understand just by myself. The truth is, I was so afraid before meeting you. I was only able to return to being me because you were with me. I can't do it. Not even with these glasses. If you're gone, I can't do it. Don't say such things, Shiki. If you tell lies that even you yourself can't believe, you'll make whoever hears them you'll make whoever hears you sad. Since they raise their eyebrows in displeasure and pokes my forehead. You know it yourself, don't you? You're alright now, so don't say stupid things and give up on the self that you finally found. Only you can choose to be you. No one else can do it for you. Sensei turns around. Well, this is goodbye. Listen, Shiki, life is not easy. Everyone's life is a hard, long, rocky road filled with many pitfalls. You have more power than anyone else to do something about that. So pull yourself together. Sensei is leaving. I was sad, but I'm Sensei's friend, so I have to see her off properly. Yeah. Goodbye, Sensei. Well done. That's right, Shiki. Hold on to that confidence and always look true to yourself. When you find yourself in trouble, calm down and think things through carefully, okay? A solution will always present itself if you do. It'll be alright. You'll manage, even on your own. Sensei laughs happily. The wind blows. The fields of grass sways in unison. Sensei was already gone. Goodbye, Sensei. After saying that, I really felt that I would not see her again. All that remained were her words and my in these many mysterious glass and these mis Fuck! After saying that, I felt Fuck! I'm sorry, I can't read. The wind blows. The field of grass sways in unison. Sensei was already gone. Goodbye, Sensei. After saying that, I really felt that I would not see her again. All that remained were her many words in these mysterious glasses. It was only seven days, but she taught me things more valuable than anything else. As I stand there by myself, I feel tears well up in my eyes. Man, I was such a fool. I could only say goodbye. I couldn't even say a single word of thanks to her. I left the hospital soon after that. Afterwards, I didn't return to the Tono household, but was taken to live with my relatives instead. But it's all right. Tono Shiki will be just fine, even by himself. I'll spend my new life with my new family. And just like that, Tono Shiki's ninth summer ended. The new autumn arrived, and I think I'll become more of an adult. Shit, or not. What happened? Inversion Impulse. What is this, chapter one? All right, let's hit that save. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or read them all, tap into the next one.
All right, man. Okay, this is interesting. I mean, I know nothing really happened for real that should draw me in, but you know, the prologue, like just the prologue, the prologue for being a prologue, like that, I thought it was hard. And then that little beginning part where like bro was cutting niggas up and shit and whatever, I, I, I assume that was him cutting niggas up, I don't know. But that little beginning part too, like, hey, this, I mean, shit, I'm gonna keep reading the shit. I heard that this is one of those um things where it's like you go down routes and shit and each character route is like 10 hours so i feel like this will be pretty stomachable because one y'all y'all know how i am i told y'all when i was playing umi neko i told y'all in persona 5 my big issue is reading sitting behind this damn computer and reading shit in this stuffy little area i have first of all i'm fucking dyslexic as hell second of all i'm illiterate as fuck third of all i'm a nigga so like i'll be i i'll I be reading this dialogue in the most negro way there is just sounding like just sounding like a fucking ghetto child sometimes and it'd be like i'll I, I be like damn am i even reading you right like you feel me so and then like just sitting here reading and doing words nothing else like bro i get tired as fuck doing that bro like, i just get exhausted when i just sit here reading so uh okay but i'm glad to have finally started this um i was i think since i first learned about that neko arc shit i was like i wonder where that's from and then i bought melty blood and i was like oh i've seen her before isn't she from like one of those book games right that's what i called them at the time and then i looked into it i saw Tsukihime, and i was like shit i mean i fuck with higurashi i'm gonna play umi neko why not add this shit to the mix, right? So, hey man, I fucks with y'all. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. Peace out.